Hello everybody, James with Love My Pups. So I thought I'd, I got a bit of experience here just recently about importing some dogs from the UK and I wanted to pass this information along. So I'm, I've done quite a bit of importing dogs over the last, oh, more than 10 years. <clears throat> I've never exported a dog. So we're talking about importing dogs, exporting dogs, whole different deal. So there, I'm gonna mention exporting just a little bit, but let's talk about importing. So the first question is, why the heck would you import a dog? Because there's significant risks involved with importing a dog. You know, if you have run into problems and you buy somebody who's in your town, you've got some fairly easy recourse on this. If you buy a dog from somebody who's in the adjoining state, yeah, again, if things go wrong, you can do something about it. If you buy something five states away, it's much harder. If you buy something outside the United States and you things go wrong, you are definitely up a creek without a paddle. So absolutely do your homework before you ever gonna send anybody any money. I mean, here's the things that, I mean, it's easy to get scammed and it's even easier to get scammed on something that seems to be a good deal. So the reason that you're buying a dog typically overseas is because it's a really good deal. That's the first thing. I mean, obviously you're not gonna spend the same amount of money and the, with a significantly more risk to buy a dog that's 5,000 miles away than one that's 50 miles away. So you're getting a good deal. You're buying a dog typically that uh, you know, is significantly less expensive than what you can find that for in the United States. And maybe it's a special color, like you know, it might be a fluffy or, or some exotic kind of a color. And that's another reason why you're going outside the United States. So do your homework. And I can recommend that you only buy from somebody who has had a history of shipping to the United States with happy customers stateside. And I would want references from those people and I want to make some phone calls and find out what's really going on. And you could even get scammed on this. So I've had people who've given me phone numbers for people that were not who they said they were. So do your homework. I mean, if somebody gives you a phone number, find out where they say that person's from. Make sure the phone number matches up with the area code in that state and these kind of things. Do a Google search on their phone number. Make sure this even makes sense. But don't, so first off, make sure that you're buying a dog from somebody who has a history of it. They can prove that they've, Made people happy shipping dogs over from wherever you're buying it from. Um, then remember that they are going to want you to pay. If this deal is too good to be true, and they and you, you know they want you to pay by Western Union, and they will you know you want a discount, they give you one immediately, and they're going to discount stuff. That just immediately makes me think that there's a scam going on. Somebody who wants to make this happen immediately, the person selling you the dog, very likely there's a scam going on. But remember that whoever you deal with, the moment that you've paid them, you almost certainly are not going to be able to undo this. I mean, I would never, ever take a dog, export a dog to Europe and expect them to pay me with PayPal or a credit card. I would want them to pay me with something that is irrevocable. Why well, transfer to my bank account, send me a check that I can get cleared properly before I ship the dog, Western Union. All of these things that are irrevocable. So what that means is the moment that you send the money, if you find out and that person never calls you back, you just got scammed. So do your homework. Do your homework. Don't, don't get scammed. Just make sure, be due, do due diligence. Please do not get scammed. Okay. So you found a dog, you're in love with the dog, you want the dog, now how do you get the deal done? Well, before you do that, you probably wanna have AKC registration on this dog. And you can make your life a lot easier if beforehand, first off, go to the akc.org, go look at foreign registration, find out what you have to have to be able to register that dog as an AKC dog. So I can tell you this, you are gonna to have to step through hoops. It is gonna cost you at least 100 bucks to get this done, and it could cost you a few hundred bucks to get it done. If they will supply you with an export pedigree, that's what you want. You want an export pedigree. That's what you want, because that's what the AKC is gonna require of you, along with a couple of pictures of dog and a, and a DNA swab, that's what they're gonna want from you. If they're just gonna give you a pedigree from their local club, like you know, the, the, the United Kennel Club of, of, of England, 
then you're gonna to have to go through steps to go get an export pedigree. You're gonna to have to transfer that dog into your name. You're gonna to have to go get an export pedigree. This all takes time. And I can tell you, dealing with the, I've just done this here a year ago, dealing with the United Kingdom Kennel Club, it is a, they just don't answer emails. They don't return phone calls. You know, you're, it's expensive and it's a hassle. You'll get it done, but it might take you three or four months to get it done. And then after that, you've got to go through the hassle of getting the dog registered by the AKC. And the AKC, they will, I guarantee, lose your DNA profile you sent in, and you'll have more crap to go through. So it is not going to be just a matter of just going, oh, tick, done. It's not going to be that easy. There's going to be some steps. Now, I have never, ever bought a dog, and I've bought probably 10 dogs from overseas. I have never, ever bought a dog and not got this sorted out. So it's not that this is, this part is not, but just, well, that's not true. I bought a dog one time that uh, had CKC. I could never get that dog AKC registered. So you, you've got to make sure, do your homework here. You've got to get this done. You need to make sure that this dog is registrable. Some dogs from certain places, you can't register through the AKC. So do your homework, make sure that you can register it. Make sure you've got the requirements right, and typically an export pedigree is the secret to it. Okay, so now where, we, where are you importing from? So I've had experience with Canada. Canada's pretty straightforward. The Canada um, Kennel Clubs, this CKC, not the same as the United States. Uh, they were pretty easy to deal with. It was easy to get information. It wasn't a big deal. Um, if you're buying a dog from Canada, you've got to worry about customs. Uh, one way that you can get around customs in all these situations, if you have somebody personally fly the dog over as their dog and give you the dog, you can, you can get past the whole customs thing. That's another whole issue. And we're going to talk about customs here in a bit. So in Canada, it may be possible that somebody can take the dog across the border to you and you pick the dog up, you know, Niagara Falls or somewhere. And, uh, you know, you don't have to go through this customs rigmarole. Um, Europe, so I've imported dogs from the Ukraine, Russia, Serbia, and uh, they were all relatively straightforward. Uh, I bought dogs from Germany and Holland, again, there was no problems. Um, I bought a number of dogs from the UK, and this has just changed. This is what prompted me to do this particular video, because I'm going through this version of hell right now. And it's all to do with Brexit. So. From these places is relatively easy. This one here, this is a roaring pain in the butt. And I have not got to the end of this little story yet, so I will keep you informed as to how this goes. So here's the problem. UK separated from Europe. So now uh, the, the problem is, is the whole rules and regulations are completely different. It's not ruled by how you do things the rest of Europe. So this is what I'm finding out. The first thing is, is you've got to have a rabies tag. So that can get done at 12 weeks. So you can't get a dog imported until it's at least 12 weeks old. So that may present a problem with the weight of the dog and how it gets shipped, so be aware of that. The next thing is, is that right now, French Bulldogs, snub-nosed dogs, brosophallic, flat-nosed dogs cannot go in cargo. So that presents a problem. It means that you've got to have this thing personally put on a plane. Well, now it appears, is you can't do that either. So you can't put a dog on the plane from Europe, from, from the UK, from England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, the, the United Kingdom. So now what do you do? Well, the answer is you've got to have a courier take that dog over the English Channel to Europe, probably Amsterdam or Brussels, and have the dog shipped out either cargo or picked up by a nanny over there. So that's what we are doing. We've got two dogs coming in. We've been fighting this now for two months. The people that we're dealing with, I think they're good people. I have not, they have shipped dogs to America before and I'll let you know how this all works out. So I'm not gonna give them a thumbs up yet till we're through this. I think I'm gonna be able to give them a thumbs up, but we're still going through some hell and uh, you know they're helping participate in some of the expenses. But what was gonna be as simply our nanny goes over there to Heathrow, picks the dog up and flies home with it. Now is a courier's gonna show up at this person's house take this dog over the English Channel to Amsterdam for our nanny to fly into Amsterdam and bring the dog back. So what was gonna be maybe $1,800 was looking like it might cost $4,000. I think we're gonna get away with a couple of thousand dollars, but still there's some very big question marks here about how this is all gonna work out. So, so I would say be careful on the, on the 
on the from the Europe, from the UK especially, be very careful. Get all your ducks in a row. Ask these questions before you pay the money. Because once you pay the money, your whole leverage on this whole thing is uh, not very good. Now, you've got a puppy there that you want to get. I'm sure the people who wanted to, wanted to deposit to hold the puppy for you, I certainly would. And so that gets the clock ticking. It means that you don't have much time for when you see a dog to go find out all these things before you give a deposit. Or see if you can negotiate a small deposit so that if this doesn't work out, you don't get in a mess. The dogs that I'm buying, I put a $2,000 deposit down and gave them $1,000 worth of my product. So I've got three grand in it. It's hard to walk away from three grand. Um, that brings up another point. Find out how you're paying for this. Are you paying for this in dollars? Are you paying for this in British pounds? Are you paying for this in euros? Because there's a difference. One dollar here is worth like 70 cents here and it's worth like 85 cents here. So there's a difference in exchange rate. So be aware of that. Um, so be aware of what, uh, wait, make sure you're talking the right currency. If somebody says they want 10,000, 10,000 euro, 10,000 pounds is considerably more than $10,000. Uh, so make sure you've got your, and then the other thing is when they start talking about weights, you'll need to know the weight. They're all gonna be talking in kilograms. And it is, one kilogram is 2.2 pounds. So make sure that you get your weights right, you don't get mucked up on that. You don't have, you know, you think you're getting a, a 22 pound dog and you're getting a 22 kilogram dog that weighs 50 pounds. That's a bit, might get a lot more dog than you bargain for. So watch out for that one. Okay. All right, so, so we've, We've got a dog, we feel happy about the people that send it to us, we've worked out what we're gonna pay them, we know what we need for registration, hopefully they're gonna provide you with an export pedigree. Um, you're shipping from a place that we know about, we've already taken care of the fact that if it's coming from the UK, so now you've actually gotta sort out the way that you're gonna transport the dog. So what we like to use is a nanny service, um, they're not cheap, uh, to get a dog brought over from Europe is gonna cost you something better part of $2,000. Cargo is a heck of a lot less expensive, but there are some risks with cargo. Um, I brought a dog in from Germany one time, from Lufthansa. Showed up at Dallas at Customs. The, it was an older dog. It was actually, uh, um, it was Lilac Dreams. No, it was Napoleon, excuse me, my chocolate boy Napoleon. And I could see him 50 foot away from me and he was in trouble. He was, it was hot, he was in a cage, he was inside a room that was actually air conditioned, but he was in trouble. And I was telling the people, you've got to do something about that dog, that dog is about to go down. And I was just being told, sir, you cannot cross this line, that's a felony, don't cross this line. So I couldn't cross the line. So they gave the dog a bowl of water, which did absolutely no good at all, because the dog wasn't gonna drink. And about 10 minutes later, I finally got the dog and I dumped a bucket of water over the dog's head and got a, got a, a hose on him. And 10 minutes later, he was fine, but it was a scary situation. So. I like nannies. You don't go through that crack with a nanny. Nanny takes the dog in their arms, takes it on the plane. Um, if you're using cargo, then be careful because there can be problems with cargo for certain. Um, find out what your, all your costs are. If you've got to transport this dog from the place to you, find out what that's going to cost. Customs. This is something you've got to worry with. If you're bringing a dog in through cargo, it's going to go through customs. So you've got to find out what you need. It's going to cost you some money. You're gonna to have to declare what the value of the dog is. And uh, you know, you're gonna to have to go and wait in line. You have to go get some paperwork from the airline when it lands. You have to go to the customs office and there'll only be a few places in the United States where they've got customs offices like Houston, San Angeles, LA, uh, Dallas, and New York. They've all got customs facilities. So it's gonna to have to be a major international airport. You're gonna to have to go do some legwork. So make sure you can get there you don't want to go get your dog showing up at seven o'clock at night to have to go to customs and they closed at five o'clock that afternoon and you've got to spend the night there with your dog being locked up without you being able to get it. You will not be able to get your dog until you've been to the customs office, they have given you a stamped piece of paper and you've given them a hundred bucks or so. So be aware of the fact that if this dog is coming in cargo, customs will be involved and you've got to know what that procedure is. You can get a broker to do this for you. The first one that I brought in, I did get a broker. Um, it cost a few hundred dollars to do it, and it really was no better than me doing it myself. In fact, it, would, it was easier doing it myself. So, you know, but again, go get your 
go get your leg work done beforehand so you don't get tripped up. And I, like I say, I've been going through my own version of hell right now with, with the UK, and so that was prompted this whole thing. Um, export, whole different animal, not talking really about that, but I can tell you this, if you're exporting an animal, make sure that you get all the paperwork you need. Certain countries, you're gonna to have to have rabies shots at a certain age, and make sure you get paid in a way that is completely safe. Don't take a credit card. Don't take anything that has not cleared the bank in completely. If they send you a check or a certified check, wait until that has absolutely cleared the bank. Not just take it to the bank and they stamp and said it's deposit. That's not good enough because that can get rejected at the other end. So I don't know what that process takes. At least 10 days if it's overseas, maybe longer. Why transfer? A much safer way of doing this. Why transfers are safe. Why transfers Western Union? Those things are safe. Why transfer is probably the best. Okay, well, there we go. Best of luck if you're importing a dog. I hope it works out well for you. Do your homework. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to us. If you think we're a bunch of idiots, let us know. If we miss something, then definitely tell us because this is important stuff. Thanks for watching. Be nice to your dogs. Bye, everybody.